about to wrap this review up for part two. You already know how it is. So, this is my favorite match of the night by far. Just because it has Jericho, who's my new number one favorite wrestler as of 2011, like fall of 2011. And it's Jericho. So, I hate seeing the word so, so many times, but Jericho gets to face Javuntud, or Juventud, or Juventud, ah, damn. Doesn't fucking, I'll, I'll, I'll forget his name even exists. Man, I knew about this guy for a long time, however, I can never, to this day, remember how to pronounce his name. And that sucks when I'm a Hispanic guy and I can't even pronounce another guy's name who has those Spanish pronunciations. So you can say that I've been assimilated in that way. Don't even know how to pronounce those fucking names. But this was a really good match between two cruiserweights. You get to see Jericho's aggression and... Juventus would look really good in some parts, even looking like he can jeopardize Jericho's chances for that Saturday against Mysterio. I'm really feeling a heel Jericho at this time, especially since this Jericho is more lively than the Jericho of today, where Jericho of today is kind of serious and shit. Here he's goofy, he throws tantrums, and while he doesn't seem like world title material as much as in Jericho of today, there's just something about the youthfulness of a Jericho in his 20s going up against cruiserweights like this. And you just see a really awesome segment where near the end of this where Jericho is basically holding on to that lion tamer and then even after the bell rings and then he explains himself look i didn't mean that i didn't know the ref didn't signal that he tapped out so and eventually he feels like Avanta's not listening to him so he decks him a little bit that's kind of cool kind of ods on him trying to be that awesome ass mix of a crazy heel and just Somebody that's a cheap shot. I like that. Uh, we got Scott Hall versus Lex Luger. These are two guys that I never saw a full match from them. And I know both of them are really, really popular. I know some of their highlights in history. But I never saw a full match from either of them. Think about that for a second. So now I'm seeing them in a match. And they're two big guys. They know how to tell an in-ring story. A mix of a lot of different things. It's not the kind of... It's a test of strength match in some ways. And it's also a heel... Get a cheap shot over the other nigga match. So... Yeah, and it's a power match too. It, it's a lot of different things... Encompassed in this match. And... It is a really good one. So far I think I like both of these guys. They don't definitely don't give me a negative... Impression... Just like Scott Steiner does, or these other motherfuckers I fucking hate. So yeah, I kind of like these motherfuckers, and I'm glad that I got to see both of these guys, because I never saw them compete ever, and I feel like a total noob for not doing so. But yeah, they're excellent. It's too bad that Scott Hall's dr all drugged out now, because that's a little disappointing. And it, first off, uh, to clarify, even though I never saw their matches, any theme with Scott Hall, any theme song, whether it's his Razor Ramon theme or his TNA theme, I usually like all his themes, so, so that's kind of a tangent. And next we got Hogan versus Big Show, which is a grudge match. Of Hogan getting ready to face Sting. Come Saturday, I believe. And this is kind of a funny take on Hogan versus Andre because it's like 
You got the body slam, you got the David versus, versus Goliath elements, but here Hogan's heel, so he's doing a lot of cheap shots, and Andre, the Giant or Big Show, here he is, just manhandling Hogan, making him look like a bitch nigga until Hogan capitalizes and uses some of his brawling skills. Ninja are definitely more varied as a heel than as a baby face, where it's just some... Some little hooks and shit. Not hooks, but some right hands. A little bit of them. As a baby face. You gotta see a body slam. You gotta see a leg drop. You gotta see a lot of different things. And it is a good match. But then it gets that classic nitro ending where everyone's doing that chaotic shit that they do best. And getting on that ring and beating each other up. Sting comes down. From a harness and kind of like what we'd hope Owen Hart would come down like in style. Goes through the crowd and he's beating some ass. And it ends with all three baby faces, the giant Luger and Sting just looking badass. Beating some bitch niggas up. And all in all, that's... It's that good shit, man. This is that good ass Nitro. I might even watch some more. Oh yeah. I mean, the thing is that this one was a really long Nitro, and apparently every Nitro after this, as the announcer said, commentators actually that that it'd be three hours long. So it kind of feel tiresome to watch three hours of. A show I can't even watch three hours of Raw without getting extremely bored. But, like I said in that video, stop saying I'm bored. Can't say I'm bored. I will see through. Maybe I'll watch an, some older episodes of Nitro. Some 97, 96, 95 shits. Tomorrow I'm going to do an interesting episode of Raw, hopefully. You already know. I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm definitely liking what I'm seeing. And I definitely feel like it's an interesting experiment what I'm doing. Because before I was just taking a chance to review some Ruthless Aggression Raw and Smackdown. Some of the episodes before the writers got really lazy. And just just to see the difference. But it's become this point where now I'm going back to the Attitude Era. And I'm going to like a Monday Night Wars, essentially. And I'm going to be going deeper than Monday Night Wars pretty soon. It's already went past that phase. So this is Mr. Wonka 7. And put that warm saliva on my dick.